streaming. Okay. I think I'm streaming. Let's see if I am. Streaming time, streaming time. Yes, we are streaming. We are streaming live. We are playing Solitaire from Windows 98. Um, a classic. If you didn't play this game, you weren't an office temp in the 90s like me. This is all we basically did. Was oh, the boss coming? Uh, switch off uh, Windows. This is this is all we did back in the 90s. Because we thought we were all very clever back then. We could just spend all day gaming. And a lot of us did. And downloading music. That that My one friend, he worked at a publishing house. And he downloaded so much. I mean, his whole job just seemed to be... I, I'm like, dude, how do you download so much music? Don't you ever work? He's like, no, it's the greatest job in the world. And then uh, later, it turned into the worst job in the world. As him and his colleagues all vied to keep their jobs when, uh, when the dot com bubble burst <laughs> and he was scrambling he was working then he was working his a off to uh keep from being fired am i gonna win this one this one's looking very good right now looking pretty good hmm. right out the gate i'm gonna win one wow uh yeah okay yeah it's looking good it's looking real good oh that's a key move that's a key move when you get the aces anyhow we'll uh Talk about whatever you want today. I'm sure I'll ramble about something. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. I just did a Hollywood hot take, which I think is still uploading. No one's here yet. Let me just make sure. Uh, it's still uploading. Still uploading. I think this one's done. No, nope, that one's still uploading. Damn. Ah, thought I could get. Thought I could get a little headwind on uh, on that, but. Oh, well. No one knows I'm doing a live stream. Unless you tuned in to my videos, which some of you did. Some of you did. Because some of you will magically appear soon in my chat. Just like last week. Oh, God, no. Am I going to lose this one? Uh, I am ahead. And now that's my score, 310. Seems a little low. I, I'm, I guess we're playing Vegas style. I'm not sure. It's a positive score, though. Let me see. What should be my score? It should cost me 52 bucks to buy this deck. But you need 10, 11, 10 and a half cards to cancel that out. So that would be 10 there, and I'd be up. What is it, 10 bucks a card? No, it's 5 bucks a card or 10 bucks? I think it's 10 bucks a card. No, it has to be 5 bucks a card. So 5 bucks a card, I'd be up like 40 bucks. So that score is not not money money score, which is what I prefer to do, but this was the only one I could find online. Ah, yeah. Stalled out right here. Oh man, just needed the 5. Ah. Not. That one was close. Okay. All right. How do I start this one? How do I start over? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Z a zero. So that, that was a 310. I don't know how they're scoring this. I always played Vegas. You always got to play Vegas style. Um, yeah, in the 90s were a weird time to work. And I was just doing office temp stuff. And uh, I was working at this, basically a high-end supermarket. I didn't mind working there. Uh, I did the uh, uh, data entry for the prices. And since it was a high-end market, we were always... We didn't really have any sales. It was all kind of an illusion, I think. But um, I worked there for, I think, two years, which was a long gig for me. And I didn't mind it, but, you know, and they were... Since I worked at a temp agency, I could take off whenever I wanted. And I would. I would go to a comic book convention. And I'd be like, oh, I'm not coming in. And there was nothing they could do about it. And that part of it was great. 
it was so great to be able to take off whenever I wanted and have my boss totally helpless. <laughs> and they would just send in, oh, seriously? I didn't win this one either? Oh, wait. I did win that one. Okay. That was basically a break-even situation, but maybe not. Oh, there's a little more. It's a win. Ooh, yes. Ooh, look at this. Ooh. Um, so it was basically a situation where I could take off whenever I wanted my boss. Uh, my direct boss was fine with it because I was, you know, I wasn't a jerk about it. I would tell him, listen, I, I'm doing a convention. Hey, there he is. Hey, JC, how you doing? Just doing a live stream, a classic Windows Solitaire game I'm very familiar with. Um, so I'm, I'm telling a story about my boss, my old boss, when I was a 90s office temp. And I could take off any day I wanted and did because I was an office temp. And then one day the big boss calls me in the office and offers me a full-time job. And at first I'm thinking like, oh, I'm going to have to take this because this will be more money, which is kind of a bummer, but, um, you know, not the money, but that I would have to do more work. But I figured, well, I'll get paid more. And so that'll be worth it. And maybe this will be a career I have. And uh, so he sits me down and he's like, so we'd like you to work full time for us. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. Um, and uh, I said, what would that pay? And he looks at me like, pay? Well, what you're getting paid now. I go, why would I want that? I said, I work at the temp service. I don't work for you. He's like, yeah, but you would get benefits. Now, I had been working there, I think, for almost two years. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I understand what you're offering me. So you're offering me benefits. So they would start right away, right? Because I had been there for two years. He's like, no, 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 90 days. I go, 90 days? I said, you're going to make me wait 90 days? I've been working here for two years. He's like, well, that's our policy. I'm like, well, I want... I want benefits immediately. I said, I'm not waiting around for two years. I might as well go work somewhere else if you guys aren't offering me benefits. I mean, like, I've seen, and, and you have to understand that everybody at this place I worked at worked like dogs. They were working like absolute dogs every day. Um, my direct supervisor had ridiculous hours. He never went home. And I was just like, this guy's nuts if he thinks I'm going to, you know, take on 80 hours. Because one of the things he could have done, and I don't know if he was going to do this, but he could have hired me for a while and then, you know, worked me like a dog for three months and then said, oh, you're not working out. <laughs> Which, you know, I didn't want that. So I said no. <laughs> and he said, he looked at me like, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I said, if you're not going to give me benefits right out the gate, I said, I don't see why I should work here. I said, I already have some benefits. I had some, I forget what I had at the time. I had something. He's like, but uh, I said, like, offer me more money or offer me benefits, like immediately. And he wouldn't do it. So eventually he got rid of me, but I was fine with that. I kind of hated the job anyway. It was boring. The only upside was uh, I could listen to Howard Stern, which at the time I really enjoyed. But now Howard Stern is like, meh. But uh, anyway, today's live stream is totally open. So if you got any uh, topics you want to talk about, JEC, or anybody else that's in here, how many people have we got in here? Just, just JEC so far. Uh, just feel free to shout it out. Um, nothing much going on. I just did Hollywoke hot take. Probably the biggest thing is that, um, you got to check out, um, Lord Overlord DVD. That's a uh, Doomcox channel. Uh, because he's got an interesting take on the recent firing at Disney. 
of this executive named Peter Rice. And um, the, the word is from his insiders, and he's pretty good. Like, Doomcock has some real insiders, I think, uh, at Disney or whatever. But according to his inside track, um, Bob Chapek fired this guy because he's like uber, 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 uber woke. And that this guy is part of the reason uh, Disney is so woke. He, he's actually supposedly the guy who hired all those people on the Zoom call that talked about the gay agenda at Disney and were so proud of themselves. And um, so he takes it as a sign. Oh, I think I lost this one. Yeah. Yeah, lost that one. Mm. He took it as a sign that um, JPEG is actually trying to de-wokeify Disney to some degree at least, or at least get them back to more centrist Disney, whatever that means. At this point, they're so off the rails, though. I, I can't imagine he's going to be able to mitigate the damage without doing way more. I mean, it's a good start if that's true. But, I mean, you're talking about a company, in my view, that's really s the bed, you know? Who the hell's going to trust Disney? They're going to have to really wind it back and uh, start doing more traditional values kind of entertainment. And I don't think they're prepared to do that all at all. I think they've got so much in the pipeline from the woke morons. You know, we're going to be seeing that for the next two years before they finally, you know, institution the institutional momentum finally catches up. And it's like, oh, here's a bunch of... Here's a bunch of normal stuff about some kids and a family and blah, blah, blah. And it'll be like, oh, by that time, <laughs> by that time, people will have moved the F on big time. So good luck to them, I guess. But I don't have Disney stock, so what do I care? Uh, a few of my friends do, though. I told them, oh, don't buy Disney stock. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial consultant, by the way. I am terrible at it. Um, and that reminds me last night, I, uh, I'm on these dating sites trying to get a date and I just have zero luck. I have the worst taste in women imaginable. I have the worst luck, uh, in that department. But, uh, I'm talking to someone who is clearly starting to look like a scammer, uh, online. Oh. JEC, the counter argument was that he was fired and that he was a logical replacement for JPEG. I'm pretty emotionally divested from Disney at that point, says JEC. Yes. Yes. Um, he, that's another thing. Like, I just, my take on it was he ousted him to blame, okay, this is a win, uh, to blame all the problems on him. Stay out of the stock market right now altogether. That's probably good advice. This is not financial advice, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm already in, though. See, I've lost money, so I can't get out now. <laughs> now I would have to get out at a loss. But, um, you know, you got to... I've been told you have to stay in. You can't just bail every time, you know, the market gets shaky, so... Who knows what's going to happen. But you also are not supposed to gamble. I mean, it's really gambling. You're not supposed to put in money that you can't afford to lose, essentially. So, But yeah, I thought uh, JPEG was just basically throwing a guy to the wolves to say, See, I solved the problem. I fired the guy who was responsible. See, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Ah, it was that guy. You know, the guy I fired. That ah, was all his problem. I, I, I don't know why I ever hired him. Now everything will be perfect. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um, um, I think bulls make money. Bears make money. Pigs get slaughtered. Ooh, that is a, that is a dark 
take on the inter on the on the stock market. Um, you mean the greedy? I guess. I guess you mean the greedy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh, that's a loss. That's a close one, though. That's a close one. Um, I wish I had a running tally on this one, but it's it's on the internet. Um, but yeah, getting back to the to the girl I was talking to on a dating website, she starts asking me about crypto and if I have any and what wallet I use and I'm just like oh my god this is a total scam but I uh I uh, goofed around on her for a while I don't even know if it was a her quite frankly you know how the internet is um and then wasted her time and then finally just reported her because it became very clear she was more interested in my cryptocurrency than than me but uh, the scam artists are always very funny because they, they, the way to test them, I think, is to use a lot of idioms because they tend to be people from foreign countries and they just don't get them. Um, Learn that on Archer. Just use a, lot, a ton of idioms and then, it, you know, what you're saying, like idioms that people understand uh, colloquially, locally, and uh, they just don't know. Women don't know anything about crypto? Well, that's that's a, that's a big statement. That's a bold statement. Um, I, think, uh, I think most women don't care about crypto. I'm sure there are a handful that do, but, you know, I think women care about crypto about as much as they care about sports. They care just enough to want to know enough to talk about it with a potential boyfriend, I think. Um, after that, they don't really have much interest uh, unless they happen to be in finance. Okay, that's a narrow win right there. So what's a win on this? It has to be 10 cards, so I got, yeah. Okay, so that's a win in Vegas. I'm doing pretty good on uh, Solitaire. I think I've only lost one or two games at this point. Normally, I'm just losing, losing, losing. Um, I guess I do about as well with women as I do with gambling. Um, although I do a little better with gambling, I would say. But, um, yeah, in terms of, uh, crypto though, I don't know. I mean, I think it'll all come back. I, I think the big return will be, and again, this is not financial advice, but it's just my guess. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bitcoin will make a huge return when the rich people are ready to make their millions on it. It'll just skyrocket, and they'll they'll be buying it up left and right. And um, so I think that is worth holding. But who the hell who the hell knows? Again, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing. Um. What else is going on? Um, man, it's hard to do this and talk at the same time because I'm concentrating on the cards. I don't know how people do this in a regular game. I don't know how Razor Fist does this. Razor Fist, he plays like real games, like for hours. Talks about very complex things at the same time. I guess it's a good exercise for your brain. But, jeez. I don't know. I tend to like concentrate on something very intensely and get lost in it. <clears throat> I guess that's me for my writing. And then the time just, whoosh, everything just goes, whoosh. it's like time travel. I was, I was working on um, the Pineys number 11 last night and I just got into it and then it was like three o'clock in the morning. Like, oh man, I gotta go to bed. Um, but that's going well. By the way, Piney's Book 11 I'm working on. And um, I can't tell you what it's about yet. I don't want to give it away, but uh, I had a lot of fun with the opening of it. Because I try to um, work them like a TV show. Let's see. Did I, oh, that's a loss. That's a big loss there. Well, not that big. Four, five, six, six. Yeah, so I'm about four cards short. Four and a half cards short. 
I'm trying to calculate Vegas style, by the way. Oh, this is a bad hand. This is a bad start. Oh, look at that start. Terrible. Terrible in Vegas. Now, now I, I realize I was winning, 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 but that was that was just a fluke. <laughs> Oof. JEC, the elites keep saying they want to switch to digital currency. I don't know how that'll work when all the early adapters lose their shirts with everyone else. Well, I think it'll work when they they force everybody into it, you know. Even now, I've noticed, like, you just go to stores and nobody has any cash anymore. I think stores are going to start with it first. I think the retailers are just going to say, oh, you want to get 5%, 10% off? Uh, don't don't hand us real money because, you know, you have to wait in line. Yeah, they'll, they'll make it so, like, it'll be more convenient, you know. It's already there, kind of, but, like, so imagine a store where, oh, boy, I got killed on that one. A store where, like, you know, they have literally one cashier and the rest are all automated, you know. Right now, it's like, the, like a Target, my Target, they'll have, I think they have four kiosks that are self-serve. And then they have about as many cashiers as they normally do, which is usually about four or five depending on the time of day. Um, you know, the, and the one where they really don't have any people is the supermarket. My supermarket really cut back on cashiers. Um, they only have, they have like, I'd say one, two, three, four, five, eight uh, self-serve kiosks in a little pen area <laughs> with two, two kids and, and they are they look like kids to me they look very young uh, they're 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 the supervisors and then um, they have maybe three cashiers operating and really they need more they need more than target target has too many and the supermarket has too few in my view um, but I think what it's gonna be it's just gonna be uh, very rarely will you have a cashier it'll be like a big long line, one cashier for those people still using cash because they'll just try to force you out of it. And then, uh, you know, it'll be kiosks that take nothing but credit or Bitcoin or whatever, whatever the F. First it'll be credit cards, then it'll be Bitcoin. Um, so we're already halfway there. Personally, I prefer cash, but they are devaluing the currency out of existence. JEC, they want a digital blockchain back government currency with diff different from just paying for everything with debt. I guess. I don't know. What they're doing to the economy now in terms of uh, in terms of um, destroying the money it, it's it's bad. Yes, I refuse to pay with those manual checkouts, uh, says JEC. Well, I don't blame you, but I don't like talking to people. <laughs> Wait a minute, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eh, almost broke even. Um, so I kind of prefer the kiosk, but I'm a weirdo that way. I, I, I hate waiting in line for the cashier. Um, because I hate small talk at the cashier. See, people in the old days, you'd go to the cashier and then she'd talk her your ear off. And I always hated that. Now it's kind of the opposite. Like, no one does that now. Um, and people kind of miss that, but I kind of don't. I kind of love the cashier. I kind of love the kiosk. I, I do. I just love to get in and out. But I don't think... It should be all kiosk. I think there should be some people there. If I have a problem, I want to talk to a human being. I don't want to have to talk to a screen or a robot because that's what we're headed towards. We're headed to the point where there'll be almost no one in the store. And you're going to have to deal with a robot, an AI essentially, that deals with 90% of the problems. And uh, the rest, well, you got to... Please walk to the customer service station at the back of the store in order to fix your uh, problem, sir. 
and then you're going to be in the store for God knows how long trying to fix your problem. That's, that's what I don't want. I want someone there, but I really don't want to have to do too much interaction with them. Um, every once in a while, I don't mind it, but, you know, especially if the self-serve is, is jam-packed, but I lost another one. All right, so now now I'm starting to lose like I normally used to use the, lose these things. Maybe it's because I'm rushing through it now. Um, you know, if the place is, if it's shorter to go to the line with the cashier, I'll totally go there, but um, it is more efficient in some ways. But I wish I got some sort of discount. I think, I feel like we should get a discount for doing our own damn checkout for doing a job. I mean, this was something I predicted in my, in a sci-fi story I wrote years ago. The idea that people would just walk into a store and um, instead of, um, you know, if they wanted a job, what they could do is they could bid on the kiosk to work, say, in the men's department wherever you are in a mall or whatever right and so you'd bid like oh i'll work for the next six hours in your men's department um and i'll just scan in my card and, and i'll work here <laughs> and you know i can work here because you already have all my information on the computer or whatever or it'll be such an easy job they'll just give you what the job is on a screen. It'll be like idiocracy. In five minutes, they'll tell you what the job is. And then you'll work it. You'll scan in a card. And you'll work there for six hours or whatever. And then when it's over, you'll have a choice. Do you want cash that you could spend anywhere? Or do you want store credit? Uh, which will be, say, 20% more. Right? So then, then you get... I don't know, more pay, but you have to spend it at the store you just worked at. Um, so it'll be like working for the company store, <laughs> essentially. That's my theory. Um, ooh, this, lo this looks like a good game. I might win this one. And I'll get the satisfying ending that everybody works for. Ooh, maybe not. Oh! Oh, wait, I'm still alive. Oh, are you kidding me? That's... Ooh, maybe. Back and forth. Uh, uh, shoot. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. I need eight. Oh, there's eight. Okay. I'm still alive. Oh, now I'm in the game. Oh, big time. I almost got this one. Yes, that's a win. Oh, come on. Do the, do the thing. Oh, I got to do it manually. Come on. Forgot. This is Windows 98. I guess I did do it manually back in the day. Didn't have a thing to just click. All right. Now let's see if I get... Oh, that's it. I don't get a... a... Bouncy thing. Ah, this is Windows 98. Uh, did I see Justin Bieber's face? Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god, dude! That's messed up! I just did a thing on Hollywood Hot Take about it. Holy F. His career could be done. What the F does he have? Jesus. And that's like... And his, um... Was it his wife? She had a problem, too. She had a blood clot. And uh, I think she nearly had a stroke or something. She was in the hospital. But, God, the guy's only 28, and his face is paralyzed. How the F does that happen? Oh, God, I can't imagine being that young and having something effed up like that happen to you. It's effed up. Oh, my God. I saw that picture, and I was just like, What? And, like, I'm no Justin Bieber fan, but who the hell, you know, I, I, that that's just awful. To be that young and have a problem where your face is freaking paralyzed. It's from a certain medical procedure? 
Oh, no. You mean the recent medical procedure that people had? Are you telling me it's from that? Oh, my God. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I lost this one. Damn it. I thought I was doing good on that one. Oh, my. She did have a stroke. Needed surgery. Yeah. Ah. Oh, rough. Rough for their whole family. That's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Um, Jesus, though. 28 years old to have medical problems that serious. I mean, guys like him should just be, you know, oh, he got messed, he got, he went and got effed up. <laughs> he went and got effed up and like, you know, fell out of a car and, you know, hurt himself. But, you know, stuff like that shouldn't be like, God, his face is paralyzed. I mean, this could be the end of his career. It really could. I'm noticing people, says JEC, noticing people posting pictures from the hospital sick with a mysterious illness. I I got to be really careful of what I'm about to say right now, but have you heard about sudden adult death syndrome that they're trying to push? His wife is Alec Baldwin's niece? Really? Huh. Interesting. Um interesting yeah so there's this new thing they're trying to push called sudden adult death syndrome and i've read some articles apparently it's happening a lot in australia gee i wonder what medical thing happened in australia recently uh and they're pushing this thing like oh yeah you know sudden adult death syndrome oh you know when people just die for no reason or heart related reasons it happens all the time to perfectly healthy people according to some but i am not a medical professional so don't listen to anything i say uh yeah i heard of sad yes sads uh it's pretty scary i worry for family members who have had recent medical procedures that we're all familiar with. Damn it, I lost this one too. Um, I really do worry for my family. Um, not so much myself, but I mean, I'm 56, so, you know, uh, if I keel over from a heart attack, no one's going to look at me twice. They're just going to be like, oh, he was fat and ate horribly. JEC says, that's a lamer excuse than climate change. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, the climate change excuses, though. I mean, they are really stretching it for some of the stuff they're talking about. And again, I got to be super careful on this, too. Who the hell knows with YouTube? Apparently, uh, Jeremy over at the quartering was just talking about a guy who got, he got popped on a channel he had for years and years and can't get it back. He got demonetized. I forget the guy's name. Um, but, um, I got popped recently on YouTube for my trailer review. Oof, that was a tough loss. I did a trailer review of, um, Matt Walsh's documentary, uh, which I won't say the name because <laughs> maybe that'll help, but I think, you know, the documentary I'm talking about JEC says, I worry too, but they wouldn't listen. Had to throw my hands up at a certain point. Yeah, totally with you. I was like, but you know, some of my relatives were older, so I don't blame them for taking that chance because, um, but for the younger ones, I'm just like, oh man, uh, I, I hope. My theory is this with regard to a certain medical issue. Um, I believe the rule of thumb is every seven years, all the cells in your body replenish themselves, essentially. Um, so maybe within five to seven years, it won't matter for most people because their cells have sort of, you know, they've sort of flushed it all out of their system, my hope, or enough so um, this won't be an issue. Um, but 
Anywho. Oh, now I forgot my train of thought. Damn it. What the hell was I talking about? Talking about that. Talking about certain medical issues. Oh, gosh darn it. Oh, the climate change thing. Oh. Yeah, so the climate change thing, uh, some of their arguments are just, they're totally off the rails. I, I think they're trying to push it for the Great Reset at some point. But right now, I don't think they have much of a leg to stand on. I mean, I think the whole thing, the whole scam has fallen apart, really. Uh, JEC says, Instagram fact-checked a meme I posted about tricking people into putting pennies in the microwave. You shouldn't do that, apparently. Oh, God, no. Do not put metal in the microwave ever. Uh, my understanding is what happens when you put metal in the microwave, the microwave, um, you know, the, the, what is it, the radiation, it tries to go into the metal, but it doesn't work because it's metal. And then it, it basically bounces off, it heats up the metal while at the same time bouncing it back into the various elements that make up the um, uh, microwave and then shorts the whole thing out. So you're essentially creating, I think, a feedback loop. So you shouldn't put tinfoil in the microwave either. That'll, that'll do the same thing. So never put in tinfoil, never put in metal of any kind in a microwave. And, you know, you should probably not use a microwave. All, you know, I, I was a big proponent of the microwave when it first came out. I, I'm old enough to remember when it first came out. And I was like, wow, this thing is cool. I could mix up something, make it hot, and then, like, pour it on my ice cream. And I was just, like, all about the new gadget. And then, you know, all the data came out about, well, there might be some, you're basically irradiating your food and this might not be so healthy. And then I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe I'm not a huge proponent of the microwave. I mean, I have one, but, um, I'm not a microwaver cook guy. I use it for burritos primarily. Maybe once in a while if I'm dying for something to be heated, but I just got an air fryer which I think is much better. Um, I like the way it cooks. It's very fast. It's basically a super-powered toaster oven. Uh, damn, I lost that one. Uh, so I highly recommend the air fryer. I know everybody talks about air fryers these days, and it's kind of annoying, but I, I'm loving it. I made... Um, my big thing is to make potatoes in the, uh, in the air fryer now. Because I'm basically just cooking for me. And um, little Joan, I'll cook stuff for. But, you know, she's a dog. So once in a while, she just has to eat her puppy food. Uh, JEC says, the explanation I hear is that it's basically gene therapy. It's rewriting your DNA to produce spike protein. Your immune system ends up attacking your own tissues and organs. Well... I would love to have a detailed discussion with you on this subject, but YouTube, I am not a doctor, so I must disavow everything you just said. But that being said, um, I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not, my hope is, I, what I said earlier about hoping that it sort of just flushes out of the body, um, I don't know. I, I don't think they know. I don't think there's been long enough studies. So hopefully there will be long enough studies and they will, um, you know, realize that, oh, yeah, this is totally out of your body now. But unfortunately, because of YouTube, I don't think we could talk too much about it. Probably already got flagged anyway. Um Oh, I know what I was talking about. I was talking about I got flagged by YouTube because of the Matt Walsh documentary. And, um, yeah, so they flagged me. And then I made kind of a follow-up video about it. And they won't answer my um, DMs about it on Twitter. 
you know, why they flagged me. All I said was it's a pretty good looking documentary, basically. I probably rambled about transgender issues as I want to do on my other channels, but um, I mean, it looks like a great documentary. I may have to break down and buy a month on the Daily Wire just to see it because I hear it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, your, your, um, your comment regarding a certain medical procedure is, uh, is well taken, JEC. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, that was a close one. Hmm, I'm starting to lose them all now. Um, but yeah, the Matt Walsh thing I hear is just fantastic. I've been watching every clip I can find on YouTube. Uh, and some of them are just, I mean, the, the, the Lotus Eaters did a piece on it the other day and, uh, it's just heart wrenching. Some of the stuff you hear about the, uh, people who attempt to detransition or have detransitioned. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I feel bad. I feel bad for people. They, they seem to be in such pain and, uh, Ooh, nuts. Messed that up. Um, and I don't think all this attention helps. I really don't. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. JC says, every medical procedure you were given before went through nine to five years of research before they started giving it, giving people it. True. I think it, it's literally keywords that trip the AI bots. You'll be fine as long as you don't say the bad words. <laughs> yeah, I think that's mostly it. But man, these guys are... They're all about the bots. They're all about their AIs. So it's getting more and more sophisticated. I mean, I didn't say anything. Again, I didn't say much about Matt Walsh or his documentary. But they still flagged me anyway. And it was just so weird, too, because they not only flagged me, but they re they basically privatized the video, which is essentially removing it so nobody could see it. They demonetized it. And um, they wouldn't... they. Like, I couldn't go through the appeal process, the normal appeal process, which meant I had to go to them. Lost that one. I had to go to them and ask them, point blank, why did you take down this video? And I fully don't expect an answer, although I got uh, a response. Oh, we'll look into it kind of response. But it's like, and then people ask me all the time, oh, why don't you play, why don't you play, uh, the entire trailer on your YouTube channel. It's because you get friggin' copyright flagged uh, by people if you don't like their movie. Or, or one time I got flagged for liking the damn movie, which really annoyed me. Uh, Russian uh, film place that apparently put up the trailer too soon <laughs> flagged me and copyright striked me. Uh, JC, but you said the guy's name and the name of the documentary... No, I didn't say the name of the documentary. Plus the certain stuff is one of their sacred cows. Yes. And I didn't say the certain stuff you mentioned in that comment. I think that one is a red flag for them to uh, get you. I think that's sort of one of their basic ones. Which is a shame because, you know, again, uh, I have a friend who's in that world, I'll say. And, uh, you know, she, she made her move, I'll say, when she was a grown-up, back before anybody else got on board with this. And, um, you know, that's a hell of a lot different than, than children doing it, uh, I say. Uh, four, five, six, seven. Damn. Mm, losing these now. Ooh, this is a good hand. But, um... Yeah, Matt Walsh, and I, and then I ended up subscribing to Matt Walsh's channel, which is uh, not bad. Pretty much the same stuff I've been watching uh, for months now. I just watched James Lindsay. I'm subscribed to him. A big fan of him. I was just watching uh, yet another one of his videos, reading Absolute Insanity. Um, he was reading the first. Apparently the first academic paper on intersectional feminism. And it's just nutty. And it came out in 1984. Um, 
So I can only imagine myself back in that era, having just graduated high school, going into college, reading that and probably just laughing at it. Probably just reading like, what is this? Are you insane, lady? Lady who created this nonsense? Or started it? Or got the ball rolling? Or whatever you want to say? I mean, it's just lunacy. When you And, and like, it's amazing to me that no one looked at her uh, paper and just said, you need, you need help. It's that crazy to me. And this was 1984. I guess they just ignored her and figured, ah, she'll go away. Who the hell would listen to this? But uh, now, here we are. Here we are in a world where uh, Matt Walsh's documentary is even necessary. It's like, why is it even necessary to have this documentary? The world has gone so off the rails. Ooh, that was a key card. Key card. Oh, I may have this one. Okay. Okay, good. Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. I think I got this one. I know I said that already, but I haven't won one yet. Okay, that's another key card. Uh, I've only got one buried. Hmm. I got to... I can be very careful on this one. Oh, another key card. Oh, I'm good. I think I'm good. I think I got this one in a bag. Yep. That's it. I think that's it. I think I got it one. Yeah. I gotta win this one. Yes. Okay. Hooray. Um... So, it just, it's, you know, back in the 80s, like, who would have listened to this woman? JC says, I ended up dropping out of college because I couldn't fake being okay with communism. <laughs> well, um, I don't know, what year were you in, I would ask. I got in, 84, 85 was my freshman year. And back then, it was a joke, you know. I used to do a joke in my stand-up. It's a win, baby. I used to do a joke in my stand-up act, um, you know, back in college. Uh, I went something like, uh, oh, you know, sorry I'm late. I was just at the uh, Lesbian Marxist Film Festival for Cats or something like that. Um, you know, making a flippant comment about how, you know, we didn't call it woke back in the 80s. It was just, I don't know, it was just, it wasn't even communism. It was just like, nonsense <laughs> it was just nonsense you got out in 2009 mm, wow it was woke then huh boy 2009 where was i 2009 oh i know i was getting married and buying this house and uh making a huge mistake um <laughs> yeah yeah okay uh, i could see that yeah see in 84 you know, like that stuff was on campus, but it was considered like, eh, it's the stuff you learn in college. It's stupid, and you end up giving it all up when you get older. That was the attitude. It was like, yeah, girls, girls come to college and they learn that, but the moment they get out in the real world, oh yeah, they drop it all. They drop it all. Yeah, okay, yeah, you you were gay in college, <laughs> and you had a girlfriend. Uh, mainly just so you could tell your current boyfriend, oh, yeah, you know, I swing both ways. I'm really cool. Um, JC, the professors were all communists by then. Wow. Wow. Yeah, mine were, I had one professor who was particularly anti-communist, I believe. I didn't know that specifically. He was he was pretty low-key about it. Um, I did have uh, a professor who, she was very nice, uh, a very nice person, but wasn't, and she was obviously signed on for all that, kind of the way I think a lot of uh, lesbians in the 80s were, because it was like, where else was she going to sign on to? Like, that was her people. That was her tribe. And so they were in for a penny, in for a pound kind of thing. Oh, oh man, crushed on that one. So, but I I never got the the, the, the vibe that she was a total 
you know, believer. She, it, it was just this casual attitude that, oh yeah, you know, socialism would totally work in the United States, but they won't let us have it. But you know, life goes on. And so they didn't really pursue it like they do today. There wasn't a chance, snowball's chance in hell that anybody on my campus would have signed on to it back in the 80s. They might have given it lip service to get a grade, but that was it. Um, there was this idea that, yeah, we're all on campus to party our asses off, but the moment we graduate, it's going to be different and we're all going to grow up and have to do things. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you could pretend to be lesbian for your boyfriend if you want, but uh, we all know you're not really, you know, because back in the day, uh, you know, and I know this is a shock to anybody out there who might be watching this, who might think the 80s was this animalistic time where horrible things happen to gay people every day of the week, but it just wasn't that way. It was like, oh, that person's probably gay. That person's probably gay. You know, that guy's like super feminine or that girl's really, really butch. And people just sort of knew and sort of was just shrug like, okay, whatever. Um, JEC, I had one professor try and explain the Bible story. The prodigal son was socialist allegory. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I never had, uh, I don't think I ever had any professors like that. Um, I mean, I had professors who clearly, you know, again, they, they had this sort of casual view of socialism, like, oh, yeah, it would totally work if they let us have it. Um, but they never really pushed it. You know, I didn't take a lot of political classes, though. I, I was a communications major. Most of my classes were involved video production or film production. Um but, and they were extremely liberal professors, I'll say that. I, I guarantee you all of them voted for Biden, every single one of them, you know, the ones that are still alive, with possible exception of one or two. Um, damn, I'm getting killed now. Um, but never got, the, never got the vibe they were hardcore enough to really buy into the communism crap. They bought into the liberalism. Um, and I'm sure a few of them went woke. But, ah, they, they were from a time. Like, I just went to this thing. And it was all people from my high school and grammar school, believe it or not. So, we all got together. It was a, a very nice time. And, um, you know, I, I met this uh, girl who used to be in my class. And she's a Spanish teacher now. And she's on the verge of retirement. And uh, I was a little wary about talking about... You know, we didn't get too political, but then we did. And it was clear she was totally on board with, oh, my God, what they're doing. Like, she can't wait to retire and get out of the business, essentially, because um, she sees all the woke garbage coming down the pike. And um, it's not only that, it's also to the horrible and sense of entitlement these children have. Um and this starts in grammar school and grade school. And this happened to me, too, when I was a substitute teacher. Uh, give me a sec. You have these kids and these parents. They don't just want an education. They want, they demand it. Like, you work for me. Do the thing. You know, make my kids smart and get them into a good school. And that's your responsibility, not mine. <laughs> I paid the taxes, so I did my part. Here's my kid. And, um, ooh, that was a close one. They, they just don't have any personal responsibility, a lot of these parents, whatsoever. So if their kid acts up, oh, that's you. No, he doesn't act up at home. That must be you. That must be you. And if you have a kid that acts up these days, like back in when I was in high school, you know, it's not like, teachers got physical with you but there was there was a sense that if you pushed it too far uh, a teacher might be like get the f out of my classroom kid and there might be a sense of danger there that if i really got out of hand like if i punched a kid 
oh yeah, the teacher was coming across the desk to like slap me down and make sure, you know, I I did not hurt anyone else, uh, you know, in that moment. But these days, it's these teachers are helpless. You know, they don't have that sense. There's a sense of, no, 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 no. The children are in charge. You're there to help them. So don't do anything to upset them. And that's a disaster because these kids, you know, you knew what it was like to be a kid in school. You know, imagine being in charge. If I was in charge of the class when I was in school, I mean, me and my, and we ran amok anyway. We were the smart kids in my school. We mess with teachers all the time. Um, but they had authority over us. And eventually, you know, if we pushed it too far, they would get the upper hand and go, oh, no, you're not doing this. And um, But these days, it's the opposite. So if you have kids who are smart and push your buttons, you are, you are in big trouble, my friend. You are in huge trouble. Um, and these kids aren't learning anything on top of that. So you have really stupid kids, stupid entitled kids pushing around the teachers. And the teachers are just checking out going, okay, all right, you don't want to learn anything. Just don't, just don't, you know, do too, just, to, you know, sit there. Just don't uh, make too much of a mess. Uh, when, I don't know, I sound like an old man, but when I was in school, uh, when I was in school, you couldn't do things like bring a snack. Like, that was totally forbidden. That was totally insane. The, the very idea that you would be allowed to bring in, I don't know, a bag of chips in the school and eat them while you were in class? There's not a teacher I had back in the day who would have permitted that. Not for a second. They would have been like, put that away and do your work. And they would have yelled at you. You can't even yell at kids anymore. Uh, and so I was in a class, I was teaching one of the last classes I taught cause I got booted out from that school and these kids are just pulling out chips and snacks. And I'm like, whoa, 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 stop pulling out ch chips and snacks and do your work, please. And they're just like, oh, uh, my blood sugar might be low. Like they knew the excuse instantly. So all you have to do <laughs> in the modern day school is say, oh, my blood sugar is low. So I need a snack and you can't stop me. Now there are kids, are there kids with blood sugar issues? Sure. But back in the day, teachers would know who they were and they would say, you know, so if that particular kid said, oh, can I go get a snack? That teacher might say, oh yeah, you can. Because I know that you have a blood sugar thing and your parents already called me and we've all worked this out. And that one kid would be permitted to, yes, get up, go get a snack. Now they all do it. They all do it. And they all have the same exact excuse because they know which button to push. And you can't stop them. You cannot stop them. And the school doesn't support you. Doesn't want to fight. They don't want to fight for the teachers to have that discipline, to have that power. So instead, they let all the students get it. So now any student at any time JEC, your blood sugar is low, so you're eating chips? Yeah, exactly. It's not even healthy. But, like, the idea is, like, oh, I might pass out. I might pass out if I don't have a snack. Yeah, there are kids with, like, they're hypoglycemic or whatever. Yeah, they need, um, I had a friend who was that way. He needed, every once in a while, to eat just a candy bar. Because if his blood sugar dropped too low, he might pass out. Um... But those kids are rare. It's not most of the class. I was in this class. They all pulled that excuse out. And when I pointed this out to the administration, they were like, oh, no, let them have the snack. We don't want to stop them. I go, why wouldn't you want to stop them? They're not doing their work. <laughs> They're not doing the things you're supposed to be teaching them. They didn't care. They don't want that. They don't want, they don't want the uh, hassle of having to argue with a kid, then having to call the parents, confirming that they are indeed not hypoglycemic or whatever. 
JC, don't you need something with sugar in your blood if your blood sugar is low? I guess. Any carbs will do. I mean, chips would have it because they would have a certain... I mean, they wouldn't have as many as, say, a candy bar, but they would have some. Chips doesn't have any sugar on it. Yeah, but they have carbs, which is a kind of sugar. You know what I mean? It's really the carbs. Because it's like, you know, like Doritos. Um, and even potato chips would have some. It wouldn't have much. But see, that's how out of hand it's gotten. Like, it wouldn't even be a specific thing. Well, you could have these three things. It's like, oh, have whatever you want. Because your parents, you know, the parents have decided, oh, at any time, a kid can get up from his desk. You know, because the parents are assuming it's like the kids at home. Where they have a certain amount of sway over the kid and could actually discipline them. What they don't understand is when a total stranger is trying to discipline your kid, essentially... He doesn't, he doesn't feel the need to listen to them, especially if you undermine their authority. So, you know, they're just going to go, F you, you're not my parents. And you don't have any power. They know the deal. They know you don't have any power. And they use that against you in the classroom. And so you can't discipline them because you have no sway. What are you going to do? Okay, I gave one kid in particular, I gave him a detention, sent him out of the room. I didn't expect to see him for the rest of the day. He came back an hour later. I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and he's just like, well, they sent me back. And then I went on a lunch break and I went down to the assistant principal and I'm like, why did you send this kid back into my class? He's very disruptive. He's like, well, he's got to go back to class. I go, okay. And then he was disruptive again. And I sent him back down like the next day. I was there for a few days. And, um, you know, meanwhile, the kids down in the office, JC, I mean, these kids' diets are so bad these days. They might have, they, yeah, they might be all diabetic at this point. Yeah, sure. Some of them are. I mean, there's a lot of fat kids, believe me. A lot of fat kids in America. Uh, so anyway, I send this kid back down. Eventually, like, he, he works the, 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 uh, the assistant principal. Because at some point, I said, listen, you knucklehead, go back down to the office. I don't want to see you. And, um, you know, and I figured like, oh, the school's going to back me up. No, they backed up the kid, basically, and said, listen, you can't call him a knucklehead. I'm like, I can't call him a knucklehead? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, we're going to get complaints from the parents. I'm like, you're worried about complaints from the parents? The kid doesn't do his work. He doesn't, he's totally disruptive to the class. Aren't you worried about that? And it's just like, well, I was a substitute. So like, who the hell cares what I think? But it was like a nightmare trying to do just the basic things, just the basic things that the teacher wanted to do. Now in the kid's defense, uh, what the teacher assigned was totally boring and stupid and pointless. And I would have been happy to, you know, come up with something that was better, but I mean, again, I'm only a substitute teacher. I can only do so much. But it was just uh, wacky to me that the school would be so eager to sell the substitute down the down the river just to get through another day, you know. And uh, that's the way it seems to be to me. So I, I think that's why I'm a huge proponent. Privatize all the schools. Just privatize them all. And uh, start over. It's going to screw up a couple of kids, but I, at this point, I don't think I don't think you'll be doing any more damage than than you need to. At this point, Whew, man, getting into the educational thing. Well, that'll that'll get me talking, huh? That'll get me chatting away, talking about education. Um, I'm gonna have to wrap up soon. Because I promised my nephew we'd play this game online. He's got a new game for me. Um, the The deal is with my nephew. He's he's a little little genius. This one, and uh, he's going to law school, by the way. Um, and he, we, our thing in our family is we play a ton of games. We we're total game fanatics, and so our new thing now, because uh, uh, it's hard to get together, and plus over the pandemic we'll play games online that we come up with. Like we love playing board games, but so we can't get together. We'll find the ones that are online. 
JEC kids are already screwed up. They've been locked down for two years. They're all insane at this point. Well, I, I you know, I'm a little more optimistic than that. I, yes, they, clearly some of them are damaged. And I'm sure we're going to be hearing about it for a long time, but I think a lot of them will pull through it in their own way. I, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of interesting artwork in the years to come connected to the pandemic. Um, but, um, you know, I think they're going to pull through it. Um, but it kind of depends on your age at that time, I think. But uh, anyhow, so my nephew, the classic move for him is to uh, announce that he's found a new game. And so what he does is he learns the game to teach it to us, but he learns it well enough that there's no way we're going to beat him um, because he's the one teaching us the game and he already knows. So like he's always ahead of the curve. <laughs> like me and my brother play with him and like we're game fanatics too. And we're just always in a constant mode of trying to catch up to his knowledge. <laughs> As he just like keeps slaughtering us in these games. Oh, well, you guys are going to get it next time. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Speaking of which, did I win this one? Yeah, I did win this one. So I got 12. Yeah, I just barely won that one. All right, one more. And then I'm going to wrap. Because they're going to start texting me like crazy. Like, where are you? we got to start the game. It's a long game. And also these long games, too, which I go back and forth about. You know, I like long games when I'm in the mood for it. We play this one game, which I highly recommend, by the way. It's called uh, Terraforming Mars from Fraxis. It's a really great game. Um, check it out if you haven't. If you like board games, it's pretty intense. It has multiple, multiple... Um, uh, like expansions, which is really cool. JC, I took my cousin's son to the park and there was a girl about six years old and they made friends, but she was basically mute and acting strangely because she's been locked down a third of her life. Wow. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. I think she'll, I think these kids can overcome it though. I mean, you know, I guess it's just us up to the rest of us to try to help these people when they get older and and draw them out you know uh hopefully they won't be so screwed up that they can't discover life and how fun it is you know i was a bit withdrawn back in the day so that's why i say it's not totally hopeless you know i was never a very sociable person um you know going back to see my friends in the high school. Oh, there it is. Um, that was a little stressful for me because I always feel, I always get anxiety thinking about high school because it was a very stressful time for me. Uh, so I can kind of relate to some of these kids, but by comparison, I'm relatively well adjusted, which is a scary thought. Um, these kids are facing a, an uphill battle but uh you know i i'm optimistic it's gonna get worse you know it's gonna be bad for a while but i think we'll come through it i do all right i'm gonna wrap it here jec thanks for hanging out with me bro thanks for hanging out what happened to everybody else i guess they didn't get the memo guess they didn't get the memo i should have done I should have done a YouTube video, uh, a trailer thing, and thrown that up instead of doing Hollywell Cot Take, which didn't even load up in time. I mean, at that age, their learning abilities are stunted at that age. Yeah, but I think you could come through it. I, you know, we'll have to. We'll have to figure out a way to teach these people. You know, we'll have to. I, the, 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 what they're saying, the really bad part is they're not going to have any ability to read faces. Which, you know, they also won't have the ability to lie when you think about it, you know, because uh, they're not going to be able to, they won't have that skill to trick you with the body language. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have a, a, a big future ahead of me teaching improv because that's a big body language thing. Thanks for hanging out, bro. I'm going to end it here. Uh, those of you tuning in later, 
probably no live stream tomorrow on Sunday. I'll be at the Tom's River Jersey Shore comic book show uh, at least until the late afternoon. So um, maybe if I get bored, I'll do a live stream late in the afternoon. But anyhow, see you in the next one.